Hi friends, I'm Terry Runyon, and I am here today to talk about imposter syndrome. You know that feeling where everything you do or anything you do doesn't feel like you're really deserving or somehow it was a fluke, or if someone says something nice about something you've done, you feel like what you did wasn't actually because of you, somehow it happened despite you. I have so much experience with imposter syndrome. And, you know, most of my life I spent thinking that my successes were something that I had to keep striving and, and really trying hard because if I stopped for any length of time or slowed down or paid attention and played with what I was doing, the truth would catch up and people would find out that I really don't have the talent that they think I do. That somehow they're going to find out that I really suck as an artist. And this stopped me in my life from being able to enjoy doing artwork just for the fun of it. I was so busy trying to prove myself and keep ahead of these voices that said that I basically am not good at what I do or I'm not as good as everybody else or I am just mechanical with my art but I'm really not an artist. I just had a sense that someday someone would find out that these doubts of mine that I have about not being an artist are actually true. And so I really worked hard to stay ahead of all that. I, I worked fast, I did a lot, and didn't pay attention. I, in a way that was not healthy, I was busy running, running from this feeling of being an imposter. So I don't know how many of you can relate to that. Most artists I know deal with this sense of being an imposter or somehow not good enough. They compare themselves with others, or they compare themselves with who they think they are and oftentimes that's not in a positive light. So I thought I would come on here today and talk to you about how I have dealt with this sense of being an imposter with my artwork. And hopefully what I share with you will be helpful to you. Basically what's been happening over the last few years, particularly in the last year or two, is that I have realized a deeper sense of who I truly am that isn't about what I create in the world or you know how much praise I get for what I do or some sort of external validation but is coming from a deep understanding and sense that I'm coming from a place of well-being and innate creativity that the thoughts I have about not being good enough the feelings I have of being an imposter, all these things come from beliefs I've had all my life that simply aren't true. And these are beliefs I know a lot of us share, that somehow we're not good enough, that somehow we're starting from a place of being less than, and we have to spend our lives trying to prove ourselves or somehow get people to approve of us or get other people to like what we do in order to feel okay. Even then though, when we do get that praise, with imposter syndrome, we don't even believe it. It sort of comes at us and we're like deflecting it because it doesn't fit in with our idea of who we are. So without this understanding, this deeper understanding of who we are, imposter syndrome is a symptom of an idea or belief that somehow something is wrong, that we are inherently less than. So the only way to deal with any symptom is to go to the cause and not to play around with the symptoms. Because we can positive think ourselves out of these things, but if underneath all that we still believe somehow that we're, we suck or we're less than or something, we're not a good artist or we're, we're not deserving somehow, then no amount of positive thinking will stick because it's sort of a band-aid on top of something that's much deeper than that. The experiences I've been having around who I truly am, and I've shared some of these experiences in recent videos, is that we all start from a deep happiness and joy and creativity, a full sense of this. And this sense and this knowing and this truth is the foundation of who we are. From that point, we learn all kinds of other stuff that gets kind of pasted on top and it, 
it starts to feel like that's us because we start losing touch with this innate well-being, this innate creativity. That doesn't mean that the creativity and well-being are gone. We're just focusing our attention on different things that are coming into our awareness that are convincing us that somehow who we are, what we are is not enough and that we have to strive to get better, to be better, to have more things. But the underlying, even if we get all these things, the underlying feeling never goes away. We still have this sense of urgency or a sense of have to do in order to be. And what happens when you start to understand who you truly are, beyond all this thinking that flows through, beyond all the advertisements, beyond all the marketing and everything that comes at you that's saying you have to buy this, do that, have that, be that, there is a sense that who you are is okay without any additional efforts, without any additional anything. And from that place of knowing you're okay, this place of understanding your innate well-being, your innate creativity, you move out into the world sharing your creativity in whatever way that looks for you. For me, it looks like doing artwork. It looks like doing videos on YouTube to share with other artists and other creatives, which is all of us, that we all are this peace, joy, creativity, freedom. This is the foundation. This is the truth of who we are. And that from this space, we can move out into our creativity. And when doubts come or ideas about being an imposter or a fraud or not being good enough or not wanting to share because somehow people are going to find out or maybe they'll compliment me on something that I worked hard for, but it was really just a fluke. Who I am, it's not worthy of anything. That stuff is not true. It it comes up, it still comes up, it's like a habit of thought, but I know it's just passing through as a habit of thought and has nothing to do with who I am. And the more and more I realize this on a deeper and deeper level, the less those thoughts distract me and take me off down those roads of self-doubt and being an imposter. So um, I hope this has been helpful to you. I'm gonna continue to talk about this in different ways, shapes, and forms because there is not like something to do to get better at this. There's no steps to not having imposter syndrome. In my experience, imposter syndrome drops away as we realize who we truly are. And even when it comes up, we just don't buy into it anymore. We let it float on through just like any other thoughts and we pay attention to who we truly are and what we're creating in the moment. So I hope this has been helpful to you. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Until we see each other again, have a fabulous day and I'll talk to you soon.